Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, I am revisiting CRISPR Therapeutics. I haven't seen it in a while. And the stock price is dropping. Why is CRISPR Therapeutics dropping? Is there a chance for it to turn around? Is it a time to buy? These are all the questions in my mind. I have cash in hand. Should I invest in CRISPR right now? So I, I have been uh, doing a bit of deep dive into CRISPR to find out uh, answers to those questions. And I'm going to share my thoughts with you in this video today and in exchange. All I request is that uh, in the comment section, give me your opinion of how you are thinking of CRISPR therapeutics, whether you're going to buy it or you're going to hold it or you're going to dollar cost average. Uh, please let me know. And also let me know what is your theory. Why is the share price dropping? So with that said, let's get started. Well, friends, in order to set the scene, let us first look at the price chart, look at the lay of the land, and then we'll talk theory. So let's go to the TradingView platform first. Here we are in our TradingView platform and we are looking at the CRISPR therapeutic stock. Each of these candles is a one day candle. And uh, I think our chart is showing all the way from December of 2023 onwards uh, to right now. So that's the span of time that we are seeing in this chart in front of us. And you will see that we are almost coming back to 2023 levels if our uh, price drops further. And if you recollect, I had done the technical analysis video. So now I'll be disclosing things uh, that you will start to understand if you did not understand before and it will make more sense how I'm thinking. So first of all, I'm looking at momentum and I'm saying, oh, yeah, momentum is falling. And then I have this green line out here that is as low as CRISPR therapeutics has been in the past. And that is around 26% on the RSI. So it could go all the way down to 26% and then come up. So as the uh, RSI goes down, uh, you will find that the price is also grow going down. But if the price moves in a different direction than the RSI, then you call it a divergence. And that's the chapter for later. I'll cover that in the technical analysis. But right now for CRISPR, the momentum is looking bad. So the stock price is going to go down. Next, we look at the MACD. So this orange one is the a signal line and the blue one is the MACD. Let me just confirm it once more. Yeah, blue one is the MACD. So, so the MACD is below the signal line, so it's bearish. And also all the histogram out here shows that the MACD is moving away from the signal line in a bearish manner. So both of that put together, CRISPR is in a bearish channel at this point of time. So what is causing this bearishness, right? That is the question. And how far uh, has it come in the bearishness. So if you had seen my technical analysis uh, course, I spoke about moving averages. And what I said was that when you're in a bullish market, your uh, longest uh, moving average will be at the bottom and your shortest moving average will be at the top. And now we are seeing a metamorphosis. We are still in a bull market technically uh, because we have our 100 day followed by our 200 day uh, so those two are still in sequence. So we are still in a bit of a bullish market. But what has happened is the nine day exponential moving average has crossed over the 20 day and gone below it, which means it's a death cross, which is a bearish sign. Next, the nine day exponential moving average has crossed over the 50 day exponential moving average. So that's the second uh, death cross. So two death cross have already happened. Now, if you look at the 20-day exponential moving average, it's down close to crossing over the 50-day exponential moving average. At the end of four death crosses, what's going to happen is that we'll have the longest moving average, which is the 200-day moving average at the very top, and the shortest and the most active moving average, which is the nine-day moving average at the very bottom. So once that rearrangement happens, that means we are at the bottom of the bear market and things can continue moving in that direction until we start getting golden crosses and start moving towards the other side of alignment. So at this point of time, CRISPR therapeutic is totally bearish. So what do I conclude from this? I am thinking that uh, CRISPR therapeutic stock could fall further. So will I buy right now? I am thinking no, I won't buy right now because our 100 day exponential moving average has been supporting this price. Let us see where our 100-day exponential moving average is. That yellow line is at 68.23. And CRISPR therapeutics closed at 68.16, which means it has fallen below the 100-day exponential moving average. 
there could be a plus or minus rate of error out there. Maybe it's still getting support. So I'll watch this tomorrow. And then I have another line of support out here, which is at 66.49. So this is going to give it a bounce. That's one possibility. But if that does not happen, then we have our 100 day exponential moving average, which is this white line. So that could be the next support. And while all this is happening, I am anticipating that the 20 day exponential moving average, this orange line, will cross over this blue line. So that will be another death cross happening. And we'll also be seeing the 9 day exponential moving average cross over the 100 day exponential moving average. So that will be another death cross. So there are potentially a lot of bearish uh, sentiment out there in the market for CRISPR therapeutics. So I'm not buying it anytime soon. I'm going to keep watching. Uh, I had sold it at a good profit and then moved the money into FNGU. Now I have sold FNGU also and the cash is sitting with me. I can buy this at a later time at a lower price. So I'm going to hold on. Now, having said that, I think uh, we have to take a holistic look at uh, CRISPR therapeutics. What does it have going for it? Uh, if you look at CRISPR therapeutics, uh, it has got, I think, around five uh, therapies in clinical trial in advanced stage. It has got one product, which is CASJV for TDT and for beta thalassemia. And it's working towards approval for a pediatric uh, dose below 12 years of age. So that's all very positive. And CASJV is going to give it revenues. And I was looking at how much revenue can CASJV generate. So the peak annual sales for CASJV is expected to be somewhere in the range of uh, $2 billion, maybe another plus 10 billion, 10%. Uh, so that is 2 uh, to 2.2. That's the kind of range that I'm seeing from most uh, experts who are projecting the market size for CASJV. Uh, we also got some information from Bluebird Bio during their earnings call where they said that they have a approximate 20% discounting going on. Of course, they did not give us um, statistics for Life Genia, but that 20% discount is indicative of the fact that um, maybe CRISPR therapeutics is also giving uh, some kind of a discount, maybe not 20, but maybe less than that. So we'll start finding information about that. So that could be a bit of a bullish sign out there, which is probably playing on the price. Then uh, I'm thinking that let's just go back to the price chart for a minute. I have a point that I want to illustrate out there. If you look at the price chart out here, uh, right now we are at 68.16 and we had done 68.16 uh, way back on 11th of May 2023, even before CASJV was approved. So this was a question of a sentiment where even before approval, the stock price was higher. And then of course they issued equity or something like that. And then uh, we got CASJV, we got a boost and all that stuff. But right now, this is purely sentiment. That's the point I wanted to make because compared to what was happening on 11th of May 2023 with CRISPR therapeutics, we are way better off right now. Uh, CTX112 has advanced, um, CTX130, uh, uh, CTX211, all of them have advanced. Uh, CASTV has been approved, the sales have started, uh, and insurance companies have been tied up. So many things have happened. Not only have we got approval in US, but we also have approval in the UK, in the Middle East and various other jurisdictions. So this is purely a sentiment issue. And I think uh, with the cash balance that CRISPR Therapeutics has got in bank, uh, I, I do not have any concerns that CRISPR Therapeutics stock is going to keep on falling like a bottomless pit. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to turn around somewhere and come back. And we have our earnings coming up. The earnings are on 30th of April, 2024. And that brings me to an item uh, that I read about uh, CRISPR therapeutics. And what it says is that um, CRISPR therapeutics is projected to report earnings of minus 1.63 per share, which would represent a year over year decline of 143.28%. So this is the expectation. And this report came out on 25th of March, 2024. That was a few days ago. Now, if I go back into our chart, and if I look at the last earnings, in the last earnings, they had a 
uh, EPS of 1.10 and the one before that their EPS, EPS was minus 1.41 and the one before that it was minus 0.67 and before that it was again minus 1.41. So we have been in that territory before and I do not uh, know why uh, the CRISPR therapeutics earnings should fall that much especially given that they are going to get cash JV revenue. And um, so I'm going to take this with a pinch of salt and we'll see. Most of the times the people who make these estimates um, get it right and many times they get it wrong. And we have seen that happen very often with companies like CRISPR Therapeutics, Vertex, Editas and so on. So it will be a pleasant surprise if we don't get a negative and we we come up much better than what has been anticipated. Then again, the share sentiment will change and it will start uh, popping up again. So I think uh, apart from cash JV about which we already spoken, uh, we have CTX112, which is an anti-CD19 allogenic CAR-T therapy. And uh, we have CTX131, which is an anti-CD70 uh, allogenic CAR-T therapy. So both of these are uh, now wholly owned by CRISPR therapeutics and therefore uh, it's going to be 100% uh, of the profits and 100% of 100% of the cost. There is no sharing. So that's amazing. That's uh, glorious <laughs> when it happens. And uh, the basic advantage of allogenic is that uh, for the patient, they don't have to go through the hospitalization costs and the overheads of getting to the hospital, donating their blood, waiting for the uh, product to be created from their blood cells and then put back into their uh, body. So all that overhead is uh, gone. Uh, these are available off the shelf and the lead time between the patient requiring it and it being available is very low. That's the first advantage. Second advantage is that these are going to be more potent than the autologous therapy which are derived from the patient themselves who is already sick and their uh, uh, T cells are going to be weak. Whereas this comes from healthy T, uh, donor T cells uh, for the allogenic uh, therapy. So all in all, I think uh, CTX-112 uh, and CTX-131 are going to be a winner uh, and especially with the cloaking mechanism that they have uh, I think once the FDA approval comes in that should be good. Uh, how long will it take? Maybe another year, year and a half uh, and uh, till then we have got cash JV revenue coming in in order to fund all the activities. So I think it's peachy out here and then we have uh, CTX-310 uh, and uh, CTX-320 both of which are uh, cardiovascular uh, targets and they are also in advanced stage of cl clinical trial give them another one and a half two years and uh, they should also be very close to monetization so then we'll be looking at around five uh, approved therapies for CRISPR therapeutics maybe two years down the line so it's looking absolutely amazing to me and don't forget that they have uh, type 1 diabetes therapy uh, which has now become fully owned by CRISPR therapeutics because of the split with vertex and Vertex had taken over Viasite, so automatically Viasite and Vertex go the same direction. And uh, CRISPR Therapeutics has uh, inherited the product, CTX211. It was VCTX211 before, now it is CTX211 with Viasite gone. And as a result of which, all the money that Viasite and Vertex had invested in developing uh, VCTX211 is now the advantage for CRISPR Therapeutics. And it's also an advanced stage of clinical trial. So uh, I would give it maybe another year, year and a half uh, to get approved. And then, I mean, you're looking at a very, very solid blue chip. And one of the problems we have seen with other uh, gene therapy companies uh, is that uh, even uh, the one that we saw, uh, Alt Immune, which we saw today, uh, the video that I released earlier uh, today, uh, its pipeline is literally empty. Uh, and uh, we have Bluebird Bio with an empty pipeline. So if you look at uh, CRISPR therapeutics, its pipeline is growing, its partnerships are grow growing and it has got platform. Um, so the only uh, complaint I would have with CRISPR therapeutics is that uh, they should start looking at upgrading their technology and uh, doing more platform research to come up with things just like Caribou has done and uh, Beam continues to do. So they, they need to do those kind of things in my opinion. But to bring it all back together, I would say that um, CRISPR therapeutics is still the same blue chip it was. In fact, it is way better than it was maybe uh, 8 to 10 months ago. And the price is right now what it was 8 to 10 months ago. So with the technical analysis, I think the price is going to drop down further. So this bearishness in the sentiment is something uh, 
uh, I would buy into. And now I'm just zooming out into a macroeconomic perspective. So in a macroeconomic perspective, I'm thinking that all the hard days have been behind us with the high interest rates. When we got into the high interest rate, it was like you're coming out uh, of the cold and you're getting into a cold shower. So immediately you get a shock. But after a while, you get adjusted to the temperature and then you start enjoying the shower. It's the same way. When the interest rates went high, boom, 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 it was escalated, it went high. And then what happened was that people started getting adjusted and we have stayed in a high interest rate regime for a long time. So now it no longer shocks the market. Despite high interest rates, our share markets are at the peak, uh, especially with the AI buzz. Now, AI has got a lot of offerings of tools for genomics industry. And the genomics industry is going to consume those tools and that is going to improve productivity and it's going to reduce the drug discovery, pipeline selection, uh, all those areas. And it's going to reduce the risk out there and therefore it's going to add to the bottom line of these companies and reduce the time to market uh, for new drugs and new therapies. So I'm thinking that this is going to be an amazing future ahead for us. And the interest rate is only going to go down. It's not going to go up. It's already gone as high as possible. We got uh, inflation data and uh, I think uh, higher for longer is something that is uh, more acceptable right now. Uh, it didn't come as much as a shock. When we started the year, we started with uh, visions of six uh, rate cuts, but now we are talking about possibly two. And that has not phased the market. And I think AI is taking a bit of a breather because it had run up feverishly and it ran up very fast. So it's taking a breather, it's consolidating before it starts the next leg. And when it starts the next leg, it's all going to be amazing. And um, I think that's the reason why it's a good opportunity. If, I mean, if I had plenty of money, I would start dollar cost averaging CRISPR, but I don't have plenty of money. I, I had just enough for 100 CRISPR. Uh, and it's still allocated for CRISPR. I have multiplied it significantly with FNGU, but I want to continue playing on FNGU. So I'll again invest only in 100 shares of CRISPR, but I want it to drop as low as it goes before I buy it. And there are going to be a few test points I'm going to look at. So I'm going to take you back into the technical uh, chart and I'm going to explain my thinking to you and I would like your feedback. So I'm looking at the chart for all the possibilities that I can see. So I'm going to take a brush just to show you what I'm thinking. So now I'm thinking that this could keep on coming down and uh, it could come down here and then it could bounce up. But on the way up, but on the way up, it could hit this resistance and it could come down testing this support twice. And once it tests the support twice, it could probably break through and go up and start testing this support and then come down and then go and test this again. And in the second test, maybe it will bounce off. That's a possibility. So this is one set of possibility that could happen. So I'm going to wait until we are clear of that possibility. So if, if after coming here, we bounce off and we break through all these things, that means the boat is gone. So when it comes close to here, I'm going to be alert and I might consider buying, looking at what is the status of the RSI and what's the status of the MACD and if there is any earnings buzz that are coming out. So that's one way it could go. The other way it could go is that it comes here and it breaks down from here and that it goes down further. And then we have a situation where this 100 day exponential moving average starts coming this way and we get a support from the 100 day exponential moving average and then we hit back up again. And this is a resistance now because we are approaching it from the bottom. So will we break through this? So this is again another possibility. So for all these things to happen, I don't have to take any action right now. So I'm just going to wait and watch. And in the meantime, while we are waiting for all that things to happen, uh, it's possible that the uh, RSI may come and touch 30 and bounce back or it could come down further and touch 26.25, which is this green line, and then bounce back. So either of these things could happen. Right now, there is no divergence between the chart and the RSI or the MACD, or between the MACD and the RSI. So the trend is set and the trend is bearish. So until we get any signal that it's gonna change, uh, we, we should just wait, that's my opinion. So there you have it, my friends. That's the way I'm looking at CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, of course, remember, I'm a retail investor. I'm not an expert. Uh, I could be wrong as well. 
Uh, I would like your feedback. Please let me know what you think. Put that in the comment section and we'll have a nice discussion because if there is an opportunity to buy CRISPR, why not? That brings me to one final point before I end this video. Um, it's already 23 minutes, so I'll make it quick. Uh, at any point of time, if there are better opportunities elsewhere, I think you should take those opportunities instead of being stuck to a particular stock or a particular sector. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why I put Alt Immune video today uh, to give you an idea of what is available out there. And that's the reason why I sold CRISPR and went into FNGU when the opportunity was there to multiply the money. And now I'm keeping the cash in hand and I'm waiting for CRISPR to fall as low as possible so that I can pick it up. So this is what I'm ideally trying to do. If I succeed, then I'll make money. But many times what we think and what happens are two different things and we don't succeed. So that's the story. And uh, many people have a hit rate, which is good. Many have a hit rate, which is 50-50. And many have a hit rate, which is, you know, really bad. 10% uh, wins and 90% losses. And because I'm doing this channel, I'm not trading as much. So my uh, win ratio is improving steadily and my profits are also growing up steadily. So thanks to you guys and thanks to the channel, I'm doing way better in my uh, investment and trading. With that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end and I hope you guys have a great weekend and um, I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.